Hello there, everyone. We're back for another scary no sleep story. This one was written by Reddit user JPZ, and the title is I'm a Werewolf and I'm Afraid of My Human Girlfriend. Being a werewolf was such a chaotic, wild experience. Constantly hanging on the edge of control, staring into the chasm of instinct and impulse, seeing how I could teeter on the border of sanity. Melissa represented caution, discipline, and control. It had been like a sigh of relief, a release from responsibility to be on a metaphorical leash. She grounded me, policed me, made sure I kept my nose clean. It started out self-imposed. I choose to stay in for the nights, choose to stay human. I couldn't let her find out about my condition. And on top of that, she was the perfect excuse to get me out of the weekly, if not nightly, hunts my pack was always dragging me along for. After a while, though, I'm not exactly sure when, it stopped being self-imposed. After holding back from my carnal nature for a period of time, I began to crave it. But every time I decided to leave, my heart would start pounding, and I'd begin looking over my shoulder, getting ready, feeling guilty, and for some reason, apprehensive. These feelings strong enough to dissuade me from leaving. I remember the first time I saw Melissa standing in the threshold between the dining room and the kitchen, her hands on her hips, her eyes dull and calculating. My hand was on the doorknob, and she regarded me, frozen in that position, like an alpha would a pup who'd taken more than his fair share of a kill. Where are you going? she asked. I swallowed, my mind searching for an explanation. I couldn't tell her I was a werewolf going on a run with the pack. I, um... You're not leaving for the night, are you? She said as her head leaned to one side critically. It was a question, but it also wasn't a question. I turned my head aside, my heart beating heavily in my chest. For a moment, indignation rose in me. I was a werewolf, a terrifying beast of the night. How dare a mere human instill such fear in me? My eyes happened to glance out the window, and I saw the empty trash bin still sitting down at the end of the driveway. Relief flooded through me, and before I could think about what I was saying, I spoke. Of course not. I just happened to see the trash cans out there. Forgot to bring them in earlier. So I figured I'd run out and grab them now. At that, Melissa's thin line of a mouth curled into a smile, and she nodded. My quest for the trash cans had become approved. I turned away from her and opened the door, and that's when she said it. Quietly, but loud enough for me to hear. Good boy. The hair on my arm stood up. I paused in the doorway. My breaths became heavier as thoughts and emotions raced through me. But I shoved all the implications aside. The trash needed to be brought in. That was a few weeks ago, and now the leash felt more like a noose. Every rebellious thought I had, every time I tried to pull away, I felt this grip closing around my throat as pulling away only tightened the knot. Eventually, however, the need to leave, to run, to hunt, was left so long unsated 
It grew to match the feelings that held me back. Over the course of the next few days, I built up the courage to confront Melissa, and on the night I told my pack I would join them, I approached her. I opened the door to the basement, and the rattling sound of the washing machine bounced up the stairwells right into my ears. I swallowed and descended. The basement was unfinished, and Melissa stood on the concrete floor in front of the washer and dryer, two shining white pieces of machinery in an otherwise gray and brown basement. A single incandescent light bulb with a pull string hung over Melissa's head like a one-dimensional halo, casting hard shadows about the room. I reached the bottom of the stairs and waited. She was finishing up setting the dryer to run, and I didn't want to interrupt her. Finally, the dryer hummed to life, joining the running washing machine in a chorus of mechanical grumbles and clicks. Melissa heaved a basket of clean laundry up to the rest of her hip. She turned. Oh, Terry, did you need something? My voice caught in my throat. I stared at her dumbly for a few moments. Her eyes narrowed on me, and a shiver ran down my spine. Something the matter, Terry? She asked. I cleared my throat and steeled myself. Some friends of mine are going out for the night, and I'd like to. I stopped and felt the noose tighten. Melissa's face hadn't changed, but somehow it had. Her gaze burned into me. I could almost feel my skin peeling and curling from the heat. My eyes fell away from hers and settled on the basket, weighing heavily on her hip. I took a step forward and reached my arms out towards the laundry. Uh, here, let me take that. I can carry it upstairs, too. My voice trailed off as Melissa made no movement to allow me to take custody of the laundry basket. She just held her piercing gaze on me. Some of your friends are going out for the night, and you'd like to, she echoed, using my exact tone, until she curled the end of it into a question. My head dipped submissively, but I pressed on. I'd like to. I swallowed and furrowed my brow. No, my words would not be a question or a request. I raised my head to meet her gaze. I'm going out with the... And you're telling me this at 9.30 at night? She asked sharply. My gut twisted. Well... I didn't mean to wait so long, I just... Time got away from me. Here, let me take that laundry basket. I didn't think we had anything planned for this evening, so... I didn't think about mentioning it until now. I rattled off as I reached again for the basket hanging on her hip. Again, she made no move to hand it to me. Upstairs, she stated, her voice terrifyingly devoid of emotion. My entire body tensed up. I didn't move. Melissa stepped around me and started up the stairs, her footsteps heavy with the weight of the laundry she lugged along. I listened to her ascend, but heard her stop at the top of the stairs. The floor creaked as she turned to regard me. Come. My feet moved without thinking. My head stayed down. I trapezed up the stairs behind her and followed her as she walked into the living room and sat down on the couch. She set the basket down in front of her and patted the seat beside her. I moved to it and sat. Help me fold this laundry. Since you've been staying here, I've got double the amount I usually do. After this, I've got two more loads coming through, she told me. My voice came out quietly. Last time I tried to help you, you y told me 
I was folding things the wrong way. And now you know the right way, she stated cheerfully. I felt a heat begin to rise in my chest. You want me to help so I can't go out? Silence hung in the room like a fog. Melissa said nothing, so I stood up. Down, she ordered. My body almost listened instinctively, and that made me angry. I let out a snarl and faced her, my heart pounding in my chest. You do not order me around like that. I will tolerate it no longer. Melissa turned her icy, cold glare to me, and it took everything I had to not falter. I said, down, she repeated. My lips peeled back in a furious grimace, baring my teeth. Who do you think you are? Melissa's lip twitched, and then her mouth creased into a frown. Don't push it, she warned me. I laughed. Incredulously. Don't push it. You've been pushing me around for weeks. I'm going out tonight whether you like it or not. I stormed off towards the front door. Terry, stay, Melissa barked. I felt compulsion grip my chest, but it only infuriated me more. Something in me snapped and a burning sensation spread through my entire body. I was going to change. I couldn't stop it, and I was fine with that. I hunched over as my bones and muscles twisted and snapped and grew. I felt my face stretch into a pointed snout. Hair crawled through every inch of my skin. My teeth grew, my canine sharpened. My clothes ripped and parted into shreds. I let out a deep, guttural growl and spun to face Melissa. I would see fear in her eyes. I knew I would. I would see in her the same apprehension she instilled in me. I revealed in the thought of her shrinking away, terrified of my true form. But the woman was doing no such thing. Slowly. She rose and stepped away from the couch, regarding me with something like disappointment and perhaps a little bit of pity. Rage overtook me, and I lunged at her with a snarl. Melissa stood her ground, and I stopped an inch from her face. There was no fear, no apprehension, no sense of mortal danger from her. I was several feet taller than her in my true form, yet somehow she looked down upon me. Her shape didn't change, but in my head she grew. She grew bigger than me, and stronger than me, and that's what her eyes said. That's what her posture told me, and I could not bring myself to argue. Sit, she commanded her face twitching into a moment of grimace as she spoke. My jaw snapped shut and I fell to my hindquarters. Melissa's hand curled into a fist, save for her index finger which pointed to the ground. Lay down. Defeated, I let out a slight whimper as I willingly collapsed to the floor, placing my chin on the ground at her feet. Now stay, she bid me, a hint of irresistible softness entering her voice. I stayed there for a few moments and did nothing but breathe. Melissa slowly lowered herself into a squat, and her hand rested upon my head. Her knuckles curled, and she scratched through the fur between my ears. Good boy, she cooed quietly. I felt my body relax and a euphoric sensation spread through every inch of my being. I have never been more afraid.